Rub up your engines! SDL foil con says, Scotty, I bought a diesel turbo Mazda 6 and revved the transmission and parked at 4,000 RPM to listen to the engine. This is bad for my Mazda. Don't do that. There's no reason to sit there revving your car up in park. I mean, one, it's a diesel, you know, they're not made to rev that much anyways, and you don't want to be spinning that stuff around for no reason whatsoever. Now, if you'd been in an American car, you couldn't even do that, because if you have it in park and you try revving it, it wouldn't go to 4,000 RPM. It's got a rev limiter, and it knows you're in park, and it would go, it ain't it. I get some people that do that and they say, what's wrong with my car? Look what it does. I said, the computer tells it to do that so you don't rev it up too high and park. Stop doing that. It's not good for your car. It serves no purpose whatsoever. And anyways, it's a diesel Mazda 6. It's not a race car anyways. You're not going to be beating anybody in a race revving up your engine. So stop doing it now if you want it to last. Ariz V says, I got a 2012 Honda Accord V6 manual that vibrates when I accelerate at highway speed. Speeds. Dealership said it was the front passenger CV axle. It did that and it still vibrates, although it seems less. Should I change the other side? I would definitely change the other side too, because you said that made a little bit of difference. But before doing this, do the most obvious thing. Now, a lot of times vibration under acceleration is your transmission breaking down internally. Now, if it's an automatic transmission Honda, I could just about guarantee you that's probably what it is. But you got a standard transmission. And more often, that's okay, because they're just straight cut gears. But it still could be there's a problem in the transmission. Before you even go with the other axle, change the front tires to the back and the back to the front. If you got a tire, that's out. It's exactly what's going to do it. And those are your drive wheels, so it's going to make it vibrate when you accelerate. Could just be a bent rim or bad tire. So put the front and the back and the back and the front. And if it goes away, thanks, Scotty, for the cheapest fix on the planet. You just had to jack up your car and put the front tires in the back and the back tires in the front. 65 Stang says, I'm wondering if the electric water pump on my 2011 BMW 328i continuously runs or is it controlled? The car goes back and forth from Denver to Santa Fe, all highway mileage, and I got 110,000 miles. The reason it's electric is because that's theoretically the most efficient way to keep heat in your engine, but also cool your engine at the same time. Here's the weird thing about gasoline motors. They actually run most efficiently, and you get the best gas mileage and power at higher temperature. So you don't want a water pump that actually cools your engine too much, because if it gets too cool, it doesn't operate as efficiently. So that motor's turned on and off by computers. It's all done by computers. Of course, you know, what you're saving is, I don't know, one one hundredth of a mile per gallon gasoline, maybe, or something like that and you know you might get a tiny you know one 80th of a horsepower, more power or something. It's infinitesimal, but the Germans just are in love with technology for technology's sake. And when they do break, it costs a fortune to change them, but they don't run all the time. That said, do you really want a car that has a water pump that's run by electricity running hot coolant through the system? Eventually, it shorts out and stops running. An electric pump pumping water, maybe not such a smart idea in a vehicle. And the weird thing is, they put it around where the other water pump was, so it's on the hottest part of the engine. They could have easily put it on a and have hoses running it. It's a remote. It's electric. They could put it wherever they want, but they put it right where the old water pump was, where all the heat of the engine is, and then they burn out prematurely. Germans don't care much about repairs. They only care about it's intricate, and it works better. We don't care if it breaks. <laughs> Teamster guy says, I got a 2011 Maximo with over 200,000 miles. I need to make it last a little bit longer. I changed the synthetic oil about every three to three and a half thousand miles. There's a small hose next to the oil filter housing for coolant. It was leaking. Other than sludge, it runs fine. I want to make it last as long as possible. Well, you're doing a pretty good job. Don't over rev it. It is that V6 Nissan engine, which is a lot of horsepower. It's a very fast vehicle. Don't go too fast. Just drive it normal and it will last longer. You didn't say, but it's a 2011 Maximo, so I assume it's an automatic transmission. That's the weakest point. Baby that. Don't do burnouts all the time. Baby that. That's how you really want to make it last the longest. The weakest link of that vehicle is its automatic transmission. All the Maximos I've seen in 2011 in the United States were all automatic transmissions. Baby that transmission. That's the main thing you want to do to make that thing last as long as possible. Cool Mod 69 says, Scotty, I love your channel. Welcome to Tennessee. Well, I love it here. I'm having a great time. I got a 2012 Subaru Forester 90,000 miles. I do all the main maintenance. I use premium gas. Recently, I changed the PCV valve. I noticed the gas mileage has consistently dropped by a mile per gallon. Could it be the PCV valve? 
Yes, it definitely could be. Here is the thing. You're going to buy a PCV valve for a modern car. You're better going to the dealer buying the original equipment when they have certain flow regulations and stuff. If you go to a discount auto parts store, buy the cheapest one they have made in China. Yes, it can actually lower your gas mileage because it can change the flow of air in the system. It sounds crazy, but it's true. You don't want to mess with any type of change of flow in the vehicle, and that can change it. I've seen them too where they'll start hooting, they'll put in an aftermarket one, they hear a whoo, whoo, every once in a while I say hey put the old one back on was it hooting with that no they put it on the hoot goes away <laughs> yes as nutty as it sounds that could be your whole problem go to the dealer buy an OEM one or buy it online have it sent to your house and then if you see it goes back to normal hey you can thank me for telling you no you're not going insane that could be the problem that's lowering your gas mileage green bar 22 says I replaced the heater hose six months ago on my 2012 Nissan Xterra didn't solve the leak I have that sweet smell my temperature gauge goes up and down I heard a grinding noise. Coolant was refilled. All right, I can guarantee it's your water pump going out. The bearings start to go when they leak, and you hear a grinding sound. That's the water pump starting to go out. That's just typical. You'll hear a little grinding noise. And often the water pumps will only really be leaking while you're driving down the road and they're spinning hard. You might try. My favorite thing is you're going to pressure test it, you said, which sometimes will show it, sometimes it won't on a water pump. Because, like I say, they might only leak sometimes you're going high speeds on highway. Put some UV leak dye for cooling system in the radio. Then wherever it's leaking, you'll see that green dye coming out of where it's leaking from. If you go to where the water pump is, you'll probably see under it the green dye's coming out. Proving that, I was right. But I can just about guarantee you that's what it is because you hear the noise of the water pump bearing going out and then it leaks out of the weep hole of the water pump. Brother Scotty says, thanks for your help. A Honda dealer part shop tells me my 2002 CRV, there is no serviceable fuel filter. Guys at the bumper to bumper said they can't find one. The Honda dealer technically is telling you the truth. The fuel filter for your Honda is in a gas tank and it's built in part of the fuel pump assembly but aftermarket you can buy just a filter and you can take out the fuel pump assembly and replace the filter and put it back together again if you want. The other guys are idiots they don't know what they're talking about any mechanic knows that they're in the gas tank and Honda just tells you you got to buy the whole assembly because that's how Honda sells it but aftermarket if you want you can buy a filter you can take it apart put the filter on put it back together again and you got a 2002 19 years old I would change the filter because if the filter gets old and clogged that makes the pump work harder and then you got to replace the pump assembly and that costs a fortune. If you change the filter and it's all new and flows good, you're going to get longer life out of your fuel pump and your car's going to run a lot better and you're not going to have any kind of hesitation because the filter also filters out the dirt of course, but it filters out pressure as it gets dirty then it have less pressure on the other side and eventually it leads to problems so I would change it get an aftermarket filter have it changed hey Carol says I need to purchase new air door actuator from my 2001 Buick Regal autos on options over 100 I can find them on Amazon for 20 bucks normally I'd stay clear but I want to save about 100 bucks well you know you're gambling one way or the other here's something you might do just for curiosity go to autos and look at the box if it says made in China go ahead and buy the $20 one from Amazon it'll be made in China too everybody marks up stuff I had a thing one day I was laughing my rear end off if you know I'm not a fan of a lot of these optometrists I went to an optometrist eyeglass frames right and eyeglass frames are like 150 bucks a piece so I got the number and I looked it up and I found that I could buy those $150 frames for eight dollars a piece if I bought 50 of them at a time from China <laughs> <laughs> so they're paying eight bucks a piece and trying to sell them for 150 so but if the AutoZone ones are made someplace other than China I would buy those but if they're all made in China what the heck buy the Amazon one <laughs> it's cheaper and it's probably the same part anyway oh here we go the Germans are cheating again this time it's BMW BMW is always pushing their M series they used to sell themselves they're very popular nah they're not selling so great anymore what they did was BMW posted a video celebrating the new year on their Instagram page showing an M M2 competition doing a big smoking drift. Turns out that BMW dubbed the video. The audio in it did not come from the M Series 3 liter twin turbo six cylinder engine, but it sounded more like a V10. I guess, again, the Germans thought they would fool everybody. People found this out fast. The motoring world does follow these things, you know, that's how the world goes, right? BMW quickly took it off Instagram because they said that's not the noise that car makes. It seemed that the video was lost 
forever but Robert Mitchell on YouTube put it up so if you want to watch his video you can hear it he calls it BMW fails again watch the YouTube video and you can see that the Germans are seem to be they keep trying these cheating things and they get caught so much cheating on the smog tests cheating on all kinds of things and now they even cheated on the noise that their car made anybody can tell the difference between a V10 sound and a straight six cylinder they don't sound at all like they took it off but of course it is the internet these days and that one guy saved it and he put it up and you might want to watch it and see the Germans they're cheating again this time though it's only with sound <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.